AMD, this is the company that's been at the heels of Intel for a long time and they're making major progress now. But the question is, like we always ask, is AMD worth the money? You can have a great company and overpay for it. In fact, usually that's the case because if people love the company, they're going to blindly buy the stock thinking, well, wait a second, this company is going, their revenue and profits going to increase like crazy. I just need to buy the stock. It'll do the same. Go look at Intel, its competitor back in 2000, hit $75, $80 a share. Since then, its revenue and profit have doubled and tripled, and the stock is currently at $29 a share. You can overpay for a good thing. That's a major fundamental belief in value investors. Can you overpay for a good thing? If you don't believe you can, just look at history. So Mo, we're looking at AMD. Um, What are your thoughts overall on AMD? Um, Good company. It's definitely up there in the industry with Intel and everything. But the whole narrative of they're going to be first and Intel is going to be second, I, I just, they've been trying this for 20 years. They've been going back and forth for 20 years. And frankly, I, I would be happy owning both. I don't think that you need to own just because one is the leader in the industry doesn't mean the other one sucks and vice versa. Correct. And look at AMD back in 2000, hit $50 a share. It got as low as like a dollar down here. And now it's currently at what? 68, 69. So it's not even, it's not, that's not even that much higher than it was back in 2000. And look at this fall from grace. 52 week high, 156. All time high, just a little bit over a year ago, 165. 52 week low, 54. So guys, euphoria happens. Let's look at the one year chart here. Look at the one year chart. It's down 50.25%. Look at the five year chart, Mo. Look at it back in 2018. What was it per share? $10 a share. Yeah, and at the, at the, at the base of COVID, it was 39. So guys, our goal is to find investments and find stocks that are selling below the value we give them in the long run. Now, how do we determine that value? Well, there's a lot of ways to do it, but one of the main ways is look at their cash flow, look at the growth of their cash flow, take the present value of it all back and decide a price to pay, Mm -hmm. right? Guys, if this sounds confusing, do not worry. Yes. We will explain it to you. We have many, many videos that are going through this explaining it. Do not get discouraged because it this can sound overwhelming at first. And it is overwhelming, yes. but it was overwhelming for us when it was we started too. for us, yes. So before we go into the eight pillars, let's look at the revenue growth of this company, Mo. This is incredible. Oh my. 4.9, 5.9, 4.34. But look, if you invested here, you've been like, oh my God, it's declining. And then rebound city. Look at that. 21 billion. Look at this growth. Guys, is this sustainable? That's the question. Now, I'm going to look at the quarterly numbers. So I want to see where the trend is. The last quarter we have... The same quarter last year, 4.3. Awesome. So there is growth from here. There's definitely growth on like another company that we just looked at in the same area. We just looked at NVIDIA. I don't know if the video has been released yet or not, but check that one out. It's not exactly apples to apples in terms of chips, but it's graphics cards, et cetera. Okay, let's go to their eight pillars. Oof. Yikes. Oh, look at those shares. Guys, this is the thing. That really drives me nuts. People never watch this number. They've increased their shares outstanding by 70%. What this means is if there are 10 partners in a business, they now made it 17 partners. So now instead of splitting all the money up by 10 people, you're splitting up by 17 people and you still own your one share. You've been diluted. Essentially, that means if the company increased its revenue and profit by 70%, you saw zero benefit to you because now you have 70% more partners to split the money with. That's, that's the silent killer. That is the silent killer of investing. People never look at the increase in shares. That's now, by the way, do I blame AMD for issuing shares? No, they're probably like, listen, our stock's massively overpriced. People just want it. Let's just give it to them, take the cash and go do something with it. Yeah, so instead of taking out any debt, they'll go and raise money that way. Correct. From shareholders. Five-year PE, 73. Five-year price of free cash flow, 88. Oh boy, major X's there. Now, great stuff. Increased revenue, increased profit, increased free cash flow. Reasonably good, a good return on invested capital, especially in a growing business that has a lot of market share to take away. That can really drive up the profit in the business on an incremental basis. This means they do a good job of investing the money in the business. And my assumption is, since they're in a growing market and they're growing within that growing market, they can really drive a lot of profit down. So I'd be willing to pay more money for AMD on a earnings multiple than I would another company like Intel or something like that, right? right? right. That's the point. But again, just because something is growing doesn't mean it's a good investment at any price. And when you buy it, not look at the fundamentals, you're essentially saying, I don't care what the price is. I just want this growing thing. And that does not work. 
A value investor knows that price is what you pay, value is what you get. If you believe you can overpay and underpay, you're going to make a great value investor. If you don't believe that, but it sounds interesting, keep watching videos, subscribe. Yep. So let's go to analyst estimates. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, it's actually not as much as I thought. I would have thought they'd more than do that. So they're expecting On the side or their earnings. Earnings. Side. I would okay. expect it, well, probably because they're gonna dilute the heck out of people yeah. still. But I mean, that's not even doubling their profit in the next four years. Their revenue side, I'm surprised by. So, Mo, before we go to stock analyzer tool, pull up the charts. Because guys, we do a lot of charts in this channel. Why? Because we believe in charts. Charts can tell you the momentum and things like that of where the stock could go regard in the short run, regardless of the fundamentals. So, Mo. What do you see? So guys, this is another one of those tech companies and these are definitely falling. And you can see right now what drives stocks. It's volume. Volume is the gasoline that you put in your car. Okay. If, without gasoline, you're not going anywhere. Without volume down here, you are not going anywhere. And you can see over the last month, volume has just been declining and declining because of that 100 day moving average. So to me, I'm going to say, let me wait for this thing to just keep declining. Get below this yellow line. That yellow line is a 50 day moving average. Once you're under that, you have no moving averages to deal with anymore. That means you have no support to deal with anymore. And once something breaks through support, it's just going to free fall. And right now on AMD, I'm going to pull up the long-term chart. This thing has a very, very good chance to fall somewhere around this $50 level. And if it breaks 50, which it probably will when it comes to when the whole market starts to pull back, AMD is not going to be immune. And you'll be able to come probably somewhere sub 50, maybe into the 40s. Guys, this is a great way to kind of gauge where support and resistance is going to be on a stock. It's not, it's not hard step. It's not just going to be the number, but it's a great way to kind of get an inkling of what's going on. So that support level is what again? 30? This one's, this one's 50 and this one's about 40. So, and then after 40, man, who knows? This can come down here. If, if this market falls apart, like we think it's going to, I wouldn't be surprised to see these $30 levels. Again. So I want to remind everybody, go watch our past videos at AMD. When we sat there and said, don't, we don't like this. We don't like this. There'll be a time when then these stocks have fallen to the point where we love the stock, just like Tesla. I joke about Tesla. There'll be a time when people are calling us stupid for wanting to buy Tesla. Yeah, it'll absolutely. happen. So let's look at stock analyzer tool. Now, remember guys, for those of you who don't belong to our software, stock analyzer tool is our most popular part of our site. The thousands of users that use it, it's like 60% of the usage on the site. What it does is it allows you to use estimations of growth, revenue growth, profit margin, et cetera, to give you a price to pay for the company. Now, it doesn't mean it's set in stone, go buy it. It just means, is it in this ballpark? If the answer is yes, go do more research. Make sure you're buying a good company. That's the key to the stock analyzer tool. Mo and I use it every single day for tons of stocks. I have, even my watch list, I use a stock analyzer tool. I have 109 stocks in my watch list at prices I want to either start selling options on them for, or even buy them at. So that's the key for this whole thing. So stock, okay, revenue growth, okay. So a lot of people would argue that in the long run, 7% revenue growth is about the best you can do. But this is still a growing company, but the analyst estimates were not very big. So I'm gonna be conservative here, and Mo's gonna do his own assumptions, yeah. and we're gonna go along the way here. Man, this is a kind of a tough one. This is a tough one. Because their margins aren't quite what they should be. Like Intel's margins are way better than this. Yeah, I'm. you know what? I'm actually going to do something different. I'm going to put a big jump on the high end. Hmm. Let's see here. And guys, we have tutorials about how to do this. And you will understand how these inputs that we're putting in here, if you just watch more videos, all of this is repetition. Anything in life, it's just repetition. Yep. And I'm going to explain this real quick. So okay. I went to very low numbers and a pretty high number. Profit margin, I went low to high. And the thing is, this company has been growing. So it's hard to really determine the right profit margin because a lot of time, free cash flow margin, because when they're growing, they're investing a lot of money into the business. So it's hard to really get the stabilized earnings and free cash flow. So Mo, what'd you put in here for low, middle, and high on revenue growth? I did two, four, and six. I said I did three, six, and nine. Okay. Because I, I believe I that- I was going to, and then I reverted back. I could actually argue that the nine could be even higher because of the growth in the chip market. Okay, what'd you do for profit margin? Seven, nine, and 13. Nine, 12, and 15. Okay. Remember, Intel, before it started spending a lot of its cash flow on growth, yeah. on, on the factories yep. and our earnings, they were, they were making 22, 21%. So that's why I'm a little going like, okay, okay is, this, is this conservative? All right, profit margin, free cash flow margin? I did the same thing, seven, nine, and 13. Great, PE. 14, 16, 18. 15, 17, 19. I, okay, 14, 16, 18 for price of free cash flow. Desire return. 12 and a half, 15, and 17. So here's my deal. You went on 2% revenue growth and very low numbers. I, I keep this at 12. Okay. Because it's such, these are it's such so low. low. Like if they do this, guys, 
that's just pathetic. I mean, they should be able to crush that. I did 12, 15, 18. The larger I got, the higher my desired return gets my margin of safety. In order for me to get 18%, I got to pay less for the company, which is more margin of safety. So I hit the analyze button. The stock's currently at 69 bucks. It's on my watch list at 40 to start selling puts. I have a low price of 16, a high price of 32, and 24 in the middle. What do you have, Mo? My low end is 11. My high is 23, and my middle ground is $15, and my watch list price is 35 bucks. So look, we're two value investors who believe the same things and have very different prices, essentially, for this company. The bottom line is, I have it on my watch list. I'm just going to wait patiently for the stock to do what it's going to do. If you like the software... Go to everythingmoney.com. We have a great offer. It's a risk-free guarantee. Sign up for a month. Pay for the month. If you don't like it, within 30 days, email us. We will give you your money back. No, your money back, no questions asked. Thank you for your time, and don't forget to subscribe.